And the scripture reads, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, say, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and sharing of his word. And for a subject messed up, but in the master's hands. That is messed up, but in the master's hands. We see in the text here, Jeremiah 18 chapter, verses 1 through 6, divine justice open to or tempered by human repentance or response. Judgment is correlated with human action and or inaction. One writer has said that Jeremiah, that in Jeremiah, there is a dynamic deed and consequence. All right. All right. Thus, we see that God can change God's mind. All right. However, it is important to note that throughout the Bible, whether in Exodus, Jeremiah, Amos, or Jonah, when God changes God's mind, it is in favor of humans. All right. All right. That is to say that God changes God's mind from an intent for destruction to intent to save. All right. From intent to do harm to intent to do good. All right. When God changes God's mind, it is always for our good rather than for our ruin. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. The vessel that this potter was making of clay was marred. All right. It was spoiled. All right. It was messed up, if you will. All right. The potter reworked, or he remolded it into another vessel that seemed good to the potter. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but uh, I know I was messed up. And I believe to some degree that I am messed up. All right. But I'm in the master's hand. All right. oh. This verse gives us some important information to me. First, the vessel was a work in progress. Does that sound like you might be looking in the mirror? This vessel was a work in progress and it was not complete. Secondly, the vessel was in the potter's hand. And as long as the potter has his hand on the vessel, there is still work to be done. Although the vessel was spoiled, it was still in the potter's hand. Yeah. All right. All right. And thirdly, it was remade into a vessel that pleased the potter. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. As far as I can see from this text, it's okay to be marred. It's okay to be messed up. All right. As long as we're still in the master's hand. Yeah. 
in the parable of the clay, it represents Israel as the clay and God as the pot. Let's be reminded that while it may appear that we're headed for destruction or disaster, there is still time. All right. As the potter's will continues to turn. There is still hope. See, this potter, this master craft person, does not make a flawed pot. But sometimes it happens. Sometimes we just come out that way. All right. All right. But the potter continues to work. Yeah, yeah. The potter continues All to right. keep his hand on this vessel All right. to bring out the beauty Amen. of his intended design. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. When the potter notices with an expert eye that this vessel is marred, the potter does not Discard it. All right. You know, Pastor, I know you probably uh, gone to work and you got out one of your favorite shirts and you realized that that shirt might have gotten washed with the ink pen in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shirt is messed up. Yeah. yeah. And it's time to throw that shirt away. Yeah. Well, in this passage, uh -huh. we're like that shirt with all ink right. all over all it. Right. And the master decided not to throw us away. All right. But maybe changing colors, yeah. that ink can stay there, that shirt can still be good. God has a purpose and a plan for us if we are yet in the master's yeah. As individuals, as churches, and even as a nation, we are valuable to the master. Those cracks, sometimes we're blemished, yeah. we're scarred, we're, scarred. we're misunderstood, yeah. yet there is still hope still, still. to stay still. in the Master's hand. Yeah. All right. yeah. How do you know whether we're in the Master's hands? Well, I'm glad you asked. First, if we are to be in the Master's hands, we must be mindful of the marginalized. That's the less fortunate, the smaller in status. You know, uh, you drive a Lexus, this, this person might have a skateboard. Right. Yeah, that's the marginalized. Let us be mindful of them. Right. We must take notice of the less fortunate than ourselves. Right. Our yeah. thoughts should be the thoughts of Christ. Uh -huh. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Yeah, right, yeah, Do our thoughts resemble the thoughts of Christ right. when we think of the marginalized? All right. All right. Well, all right. Well. But be mindful. Being mindful is not enough by itself. Uh -huh. Many people are mindful. Well, we have a good thought process. All right. Secondly, let us be motivated by the mandates of the Master. All right. The commandments that were left for us to follow, not just the thou shall nots, right. but the thou shalls as well. Uh, All right. Love your enemies. Uh -huh. uh -oh. yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. All right. Yeah. What you say? No. Love your enemies. No. This person I know for a fact, they don't care nothing about me. Yeah, yeah. They treat me bad. The master says we need to love our enemies. Even the ones do good to those who misuse us. We can do that if we stay in the master's hand. Yeah, yeah. We, we can do that. He'll enable us to do that. Thirdly, if we are in the master's hands, we'll be moved to make a meaningful difference. Like the master, we must be compassionate. We cannot see a need and ignore it. All right. If we're in the master's hands, we'll be compelled by compassion. All right. There is one ray of hope 
that shines through verse 4. That is, the master does not fashion his vessel to our liking. All right. Right. Amen. Not to my liking anyway. All right. Not to your liking, but one that seems good All right. to the master. Yeah. All right. You know, uh, if we break away from the master's hands, right. if we're a vessel that's rushing to get off the wheel, All right. here's a couple of examples of some things that can go wrong, yeah. Brother Lewis. Right. Strength in Jesus keeps us going straight. All right. Off the wheel, I might want to zigzag right. as I roll. All right. days being from the country, you know, we used to come to church with our issues and put it on the altar. Nowadays, in the new millennium, we want to take our issues to our friends and patron as we falter. I don't need none of the vodka that they call Sirach. When I have all that I need of my Jesus that I call my rock. Stand in the master's hand. And as a side note, let me add that you don't always have to be a willing participant to be in the master's hand. If you think I'm playing Axel Saul of Tarsus. I don't know about you, but I'll admit that I may be messed up, but I'm in the master's hands. I understand that I'm a work in progress, but I'm in the master's hands. In some social circles, I could even be marginalized, but I'm in the master's hands. I may be sometimes misunderstood, but I'm in the master's hands. I may be mired by unmitigating circumstances, yet I'm in the master's hands. Sometimes under misconceptions, but I'm staying in the master's hands. And I guess to sum it all up, I guess I might be messed up, messed on, messed over, messy, but I'm in the master's hands. I'm going to stay in the master's hands. Be real. Are you in the master's hand? This master sent his son down through 42 generations. His name was Jesus. And this same Jesus of Nazareth, he came down to save that which was lost. He came down doing good, but it was people saw him as marginalized. They whipped him all night long. Yeah, yeah. Before they whipped him, they marched him from judgment hall to judgment yeah, yeah, yeah. hall because no one court could find him guilty all of anything. Right. So they marched him to another. Right. They all could right. not find him guilty of anything, but they decided that this Jesus must die. Right. So they marched him up an old hill called Calvary. Yeah. There they hung him high. They stretched him wide. Yeah. And Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. Thank you, right. My Jesus... He died from the 6th to the ninth hour. Yeah, yeah. Right. Then they took him off the cross and they laid him in a tomb. Yeah. Jesus stayed there all of Friday. Yeah. All of Saturday. Yeah. Right. Christ was in the tomb on the weekend. Yeah. Right. And there wasn't no clubbing going on. All right. Christ yeah. got up early Sunday yeah. morning. He got up early with all power in his hands. Yeah. And said that whosoever will, yeah. let him come. Yeah. And take up the waters of life for you. God bless you. Amen. Messed up. But in the master's hands.